For many obvious reasons, it appears that bad landings steal most of the attention away from silky smooth aircraft touchdowns. The soft landing is something that pilots are generally after and achieve with pride. With this in mind, here are three of the many contributors that make or break smooth landings. The most stable wind condition to land a plane in is a headwind right down the runway, straight down the pipe as pilots say. A wind perfectly parallel to the axis of a runway without any variations in direction and speed is nearly impossible to find. However, engineers build modern airports to take advantage of an area's diurnal wind tendencies. The rarity of the ideal headwind right down the pipe makes it somewhat of a pipe dream. A perfect non-gusting wind down the runway centerline allows pilots to make little to no rudder and aileron adjustments in the flare and during main gear touchdown. This lets the flying pilot focus more on the flare while not needing to get the wheels on the runway to help maintain directional control in a crosswind. Even when the wind is right down the runway, any slight let-off in the wind speed can lead to a small drop onto the runway while a gust might cause the plane to balloon and float, ruining the perfect landing that was only moments from happening. Then there's runway slope. Runways are thousands of feet long and are beholden to the earth on which they're built. There are tolerances for the gradient change over defined distances, but runways are sloped even after engineers have smoothed the ground during construction. Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson's north side features one of the most apparent visual examples of a runway with a slope. A runway without any slope is easier to land on. When the runway slopes modestly away from or towards an aircraft, it causes a slight miscalculation from the radar altimeter callout and what the pilot expected by either increasing or decreasing the assumed cadence. An upsloping runway in the touchdown zone might result in a firmer landing than deserved, while a downslope results in a float. Pilots who fly into Dallas-Fort Worth are very familiar with the touchdown zone of runway 17 left, which has a noticeable hump about 1,200 feet past the threshold. Pilots are a lot less keen to finesse a greaser on a short runway, especially if said runway has snow, ice or water on it. On the other hand, a long runway gives pilots more ability to play around with the flare. When the margin between the distance needed to stop and how much pavement is available is enormous, pilots don't mind eating up a little runway to make the landing smoother. One thing airline pilots will not do is land long, either intentionally or unintentionally. Every runway has a touchdown zone, usually the first 3,000 feet. On a short runway, the airline might require its crews to land in the first 1,000 feet and use a full flap setting, but landing in the touchdown zone, however it is defined, is non-negotiable. When pilots float in the flare more than anticipated, they either have to relent and allow the plane to touch down a bit firmer than they'd like, or go around if landing in the touchdown zone cannot happen safely. There are other elements that make up every touchdown, such as familiarity with the plane, density altitude, aircraft weight, etc. Are there any particularly good or bad landings you can remember? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.